Demolition Crew is a fun new indie title that's reminiscent of old arcade games but with a classic NES vibe. In this platformer, you will break bricks, throw balls, and jump your way to the top in a race against time. Make sure to race to the top and ring that bell. On your way to the top, you'll face off against vicious enemies and try to solve fun, challenging puzzles. Sound tough? Well, you don't have to do it alone. You can join a friend and play their multiplayer mode. So check out the game today, available for iOS and Android. Today on Talk About Games, we're going to be discussing the Game Boy games that were like over there in a bin. Yeah. So this is Ryan, some of Ryan's Game Boy collection. So when we started doing Talk About Games, you know, we started playing a lot of the harder Game Boy games. Mm. So I started going to flea markets and stuff like that and just buying games that I thought would be good for the show. Yeah. And this is probably about a quarter of my total Game Boy game collection. Okay. But these were the Game Boy games that were over there. Can I want to before we even get to this. Yeah. So you're saying so you have a lot more Game Boy games. Um okay. now you, you just had them like in a bin sitting over here cuz we've probably been using them for videos and stuff. I my Game Boy collection which is not here. Uh I had them in a big red binder with um like what you collect baseball cards for. Yeah, yeah. But the problem with that is if you turn it over at all, they all fall out and it's horrible. And I know like I've been to like game stores and stuff and they do the same thing. Um, there has to be a better way to store Game Boy games alphabetically. And the only thing I can really think of is if you had a thing like that, that was like you store baseball cards in it, but there was like a, a thing on top to like button down. But that I think somebody out there needs to make a custom Game Boy case for people who have a bunch of Game Boy games. There's a hard plastic Game Boy case that stores the Game Boy, plus like two or three stacks of games. Have yeah, you ever seen one of those? that's not enough games. No, I know, but, yeah. but, but I'm saying like, those slats, mm. you know what you could do? Get a 3D printer, find the shape of this, yeah. and print a frame out of it. Mm -hmm. So it's like rows. Yeah. And if you 3D printed them so they could interlock with each other, you can make it as big as you needed it to be. There you go. So you guys that have 3D printers and whatnot, and I know some of you actually probably do, yeah. print something. If if you were to 3D print a interlocking Game Boy game solution, both horizontally, vertically, and up and down, we would talk about it on this show. That would be awesome, actually, because I would yeah. love to put. Because it's actually a problem. Every time I go to like do a stream or something with a Game Boy game, <laughs> I grab my thing out. and and like like 15 cartridges will like fall yeah. out, and then I fucking open them, put them back, and then right. so the, and they're all out of order because the, if they're just gonna fall out anyway, I don't want to alphabetize them. So. so so what I do to store my Game Boy games, I'm not as sophisticated as Mike. I take them, I put them in a stack like maybe this high, a couple stacks, I put them in the bin over there. Right. That, and oh, I, I'm, yeah, I'm at that point now. I have mine in a bin at this point because I yeah, get so tired. Because you're of tired it. of going in. And I'm out tired of it. Yeah. I, I'm going to start with uh, Super Mario Land. All right, good start. So this is the player's choice Super Mario Land, and when when I bought this game, it was like brand new, like this cartridge, like like feel that. Why is it the player's Look at that. choice one? Because it has the little thing on it. it was this there a different one? Yeah, there was the regular one. It doesn't say uh, player's choice on it. Okay. Um, Super Mario Land is a it, it, you know, it's a Mario game, but it is a very compromised Mario game. Mm -hmm. I guess the the best thing about it is uh, Daisy coming in as the princess. Because it's, it's basic because it. it's for Game Boy? Well, no, because like if you go on to like other Mario games we're going to talk about, okay. it's like not the full Mario formula. Right. You know, it's it, a short game. It's short. The running and jumping is weird. It has shooter sections in it. Yeah. Which is also strange. I, I I really like that game though. Oh, I don't think it's it's shit or anything. I'm just saying that like compared to Super Mario Land Two, yeah, six golden coins. Like this game's way better. Okay. You don't think so? Um, I played. I'm, I'm curious. Like, yeah, I would listen to that. Well, I I can't answer to that question because I've only played. I have played the second one, but not a lot. Yeah. So I played this one like a million times more. Yeah. So, so I can't. I can't. So yeah. This game, Super Mario Land feels like a Game Boy game. It has all the early Game Boy game problems, like like Solar Striker here. Like nobody's thinking about Solar Striker. 
right? It's an old right old game. I mean, we are right now, but in general, we're not. I bet you there's people that are watching this video right now, though, that are thinking about Solar Striker. If you are playing Solar Striker right now, let us know in the comments below, because mm -hmm. that would be insane. Good, good, you know, that'd be great. Um, but anyway, Super Mario Land is linear, like the original Mario one. It's got the shooter sections. It's got Daisy. There's no Peach. There's a third one with Wario. There is. Uh, Super Mario Land 3 is Wario Land. Mm -hmm. So we got Mario Land and Mario Land 2. I definitely think if you haven't beat this, you should play it because it's like a really solid. I need to do that on stream and I haven't done it yet. Yeah. That one has it's the one with the carrot like upgrade or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It is. And you turn with bunny ears. The bunny, bunny ears. ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I need to play that more. Yeah. So People overlook this game because the first few levels is just basic Donkey Kong. And then it explodes. After that, it turns into a completely different game and it's a really, really good game. So that's all I'm going to say about it because we have done a video on it. But if you have not played that, it's a great game and don't overlook it, like get past the first few levels and keep going. So this Pac-Man is actually pretty interesting because it was actually sent to us by Red Bull because they have the new Pac-Man drinks that are like- Pac-Man's on it. Pac-Man's on it and yeah. stuff. And they sent us this like, it looked like a cocktail table yeah, I saw that. and stuff. But then if you opened it up, there was a Game Boy in it and there was this Pac-Man. Where is that? I think I saw that. It's, it's around here. Yeah. It's somewhere. Um, I think that this game is just, yeah, I actually, I did play it. I popped it in and this is just Pac-Man. Yeah. There's nothing That's fine. Well, you know what? It. There had to be a Pac-Man yeah. on Game Boy. So there yeah. it is. So, so these two games are actually like opposites of each other. Donkey Kong is like this big expanded yeah. universe. And, and they did nothing with that. And Pac-Man is just Pac-Man. I right. mean, it's got some weird scrolling and stuff, I think, but yeah. I'll go for DuckTales just because you, you got two copies of them. One of them doesn't work. One of them doesn't work. I'm afraid to throw it out though because it's DuckTales. Like, if somebody could fix that. I wonder which one you got. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> it's didn't this work. one. Yeah, this one probably didn't work. Um, yeah. We did a video on this one, did we not? We did. And yeah. uh, it was a few years ago. And I rem think I remember liking this. Yeah. And I also, by the way, um, I had played uh, DuckTales 2 in the NES game. Mm -hmm. I finally bought it. I got it at too many games. And I didn't own it, and I love the DuckTales game. I, I have streamed the first one so many times. And here's here's the first one here. Um, I actually love DuckTales too. That is a very rare NES game. Yeah. And I mean, the price it goes for, it's not worth it. But if you do get it, or you do get the chance to play it somehow, it's great. These yeah. are two games that are required if you own a Game Boy. Yeah. Like Mario, yeah, that's good, you need it. But you need Dr. Mario and Tetris. These games are amazing. They're very faithful. They're they're pretty much uncompromised, even though they're Game Boy games. Now, granted, you know the NES versions have you know more colors, of course, and things like that. But I mean, these are great mobile experiences. The gameplay is amazing. They're some of the best games ever made. If I had to pick a Tetris game of all, I would pick the NES version, not Tengen. Yeah. Uh, not that I really dislike the Tengen one, but the, the regular one is the one I'd pick. But the Game Boy one, I might even argue that is the maybe more, because everybody had this for Game Boy. It was the package. I, I would imagine that this sold more mm -hmm. than the NES version. Uh, this is probably the more played one, I think. But if you want to play Tetris, I'd probably say go for the NES one. Um, Zelda Oracle of Ages. Let me tell you how much I love Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. Um, they're some of my favorite Zelda games. Um, I've always been more of a fan of the traditional so style Zelda. Um, these ones had great puzzles, and I like challenging um, like Zelda dungeons. That's what Zelda's all about to me, yeah. the, the gameplay. And uh, like Link's Awakening, which we don't have here, but um, that's probably in your collection somewhere. Yeah. somewhere uh, but yeah, Oracle of Ages um, and Oracle of Se Seasons, these are the ones that if you beat both games, then you could connect them like with the cable and mm -hmm. then fight Ganon, because actually I think Vaddy or something is the, yeah. is the villain in these. It's been a while since I played it. But when I played through these games, I think it was on the whatever. Can you plug this into the SP? I think I was doing it on the SP or something. You can plug it the SP. Yeah, I love these games and they're, they are very high on my list of Zelda games. You know, a lot of, a lot of people say that, um, you know, Link to the Past is their favorite game or the best game of all time. Um, Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons, Link's Awakening, really are all part of that family. 
of games. I did want to also say, I, I don't have it here, but I actually, I like these games so much that just for the hell of it, as for like a collector purpose, I got the uh, Japanese versions of these games. Um, I'm trying to, I'd like to not only own all the American releases of Zelda games, it's my favorite franchise, yeah. but I'd like to get all the Japanese releases. Do you have the disc system, Famicom disc system, Zeldas, any of them? I do, I have them. Oh, all. that's cool. I, yeah, I do. I, and I actually just got those recently, and, and you know what else I have uh, that you'd probably like? I have the original, original Metroid. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So. I, Castlevania Adventure was the hardest game that we ever played on Talk About Games. Probably. Oh my God, that boss Star battle. Star Wars was hard. Star Wars is hard too, yeah. 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 But I mean, th this was up there and you know, doing that bat battle and all the spikes and everything were, were a huge, huge pain. Stinger's not easy. Stinger's not easy either. You know what's funny, we were able to beat this Stinger. Um, we got cut a little short. Um, the improvement from Castlevania Adventure to Castlevania Legends in, in graphical quality and control and everything's amazing. And Castlevania Adventure, they gotta have like, like the, the ropes and the weird fire power ups and stuff. By the time you get to Castlevania Legends, which supports Super Game Boy, it's way better. I literally just bought Castlevania Legends because I, that's one, I played these ones. I've never played Castlevania yeah. Legends and I wanna play like all the Castlevania games. So do you remember anything about this one? Yes, I do actually. This is the Castlevania that has the first female Belmont. Okay. Which is kind of cool. Is and it good? And it is good. Okay. And I think this is for a long time, this was the earliest in the timeline, I think, or earliest or latest in the timeline for a long time. Okay. Um, I, I don't remember which, but I know that it was one of the extremes. Okay. Which is pretty interesting. Yeah, I definitely want to play that. And I think that's all the ones on the original Game Boy. Yeah. There are so many, first, there are so many Game Boy and like handheld Castlevanias. I just got Order of Ecclesia, um, which I want to try, but that's more GBA. of a Metroid, uh, uh, Metroidvania. Yeah. The, one. All of the ones from, um, GBA and, uh, DS are Metroidvania, Metroidvania style. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if, if you get anything from this video, get that like most people don't talk about Game Boy or collect Game Boy. It was a super popular system and it had amazing games as you can see. It's, you, you know, a lot of these games don't get much love, but they should because they are good. I can't imagine how Street Fighter 2 it's is trash. on Game Boy. Yeah. It's all, all those fighting games are yeah, not good. I have Shaq Fu for Game Boy. It's great. Have you ever played, <laughs> yeah. have you ever played Killer Instinct on... Game Boy. No, I can't. It's, it's, be. it's bad, yeah. but it's better than Street Fighter 2. You know what I just played on yeah. Game Boy? Uh, Hercules. Oh, yeah. You have got to see how bad that is. Oh it's probably gosh. the worst Game Boy game I've ever yeah. played. Yeah. Actually, uh, one more thing I want to say about Game Boy. I just played um, Dragon's Lair on Game Boy. Yeah. It's nothing like the NES game. It's nothing like the arcade game. Like, they made it its own thing, which is cool, but the game fucking sucks. And I played it. And there's like a part where there's like a there's like a platform like swinging back and forth, and then there's this spike. And 50 times I tried to jump over the spike, I couldn't get over it. So I checked my email like two days later, and there's this guy that had he loved that game. So he sent me like this like 15 paragraph email. And I by the way I talked to him after that um, about about that game, and I, it was amazing to me because that somebody with a game like that, it would almost be like Street Fighter on Game Boy, like somebody that like loves it. And he was like really defending the game and I was like, I kind of want to try it again now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, it's kind of it's like how we are with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's, a, it's an awful game, but it has its moments. And if you could get lost in it, you'll get some entertainment value out of it. I don't hate it. I don't hate that game. You don't hate it. Mm -mm. This game right here, Donkey Kong Land, really shows how amazing Game Boy is as a system. Donkey Kong Country is a Super Nintendo game. This it, Game Boy Game Boy is so not powerful compared to Super Nintendo, and the fact that using different programming techniques and pre-rendering and stuff like that, they were able to make a game that looks this good and plays this good on the Game Boy is an amazing programming feat. It's it's Donkey Kong Country. It's great. Um, this this one I can only say now I played the 
NES version of Batman Return of the Joker. Um, it's another one that I know is hard and I'd like to play it. I didn't even realize that it was actually on Game Boy. I love the cover, how the bat symbol is like in his eyes. Have you played this one? I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but yeah. I thought it would be something that we would like to play. Yeah, I would I, I would do that at some yeah. point. I almost feel like I might rather play the Game Boy version because maybe it's easier because I've heard the NES one so hard. However, I thought the same about Mega Man on Game Boy, and it turned out that Mega Man on Game Boy was harder than any of the NES ones. Yes, it's very hard. So don't always think that just because, oh, it's a Game Boy game, it'll be shorter, it'll be easier, it's, you know, it's gotta be. Not necessarily. This is Gargoyle's Quest. And you know, Gargoyle's Quest is a super expensive game on NES. Because there's Gargoyle's Quest, there's Gargoyle's Quest 2. I'm trying to think. And there's Demon's, Demon's, Demon's Crest. Crest. Demon's Crest. Yeah. yeah. And then there's the Super Nintendo one. And all of those are, are expensive games. And I got this game for $16.99. So if you want to experience this franchise without breaking the bank, mm -hmm. this is the cheapest way to do it. And you know this is a good game in its own right. Oh wait, you're saying that the Super Nintendo game is worth more? Is it the harder to get? The Super Nintendo and NES games are really expensive. Oh okay. But this is only $16.99. Oh I see. So you know it's 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 expensive for a Game Boy game. Again, $16.99 is a lot of money for a Game Boy game. So you know what, what the thing but, is about Demon's Crest? I I so this is funny. I played through and I actually beat that game years and years ago before I was streaming, yeah. and. I beat it very quickly. And that, that game has like an overworld that's kind of yeah. like a Final Fantasy III and whatnot. And I really need to go back to that game because I know that people like love that game and I'm like, well, I beat it really like fast. I feel like I missed like all of the game. There's some way to like right. beat that. So I, I, I don't remember who I was talking to, but somebody told me that that's true. Like you can kind of skip a lot of the game, I guess. Yeah. So I really got to go back and do that more complete. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna talk about NBA Jam just because this is like a super compromised version of NBA Jam. I don't recommend it, but you know it's it's still NBA Jam. It still has that '90s feel to it. Which one's the um, one to play with NBA Jam? Genesis. Genesis. Yeah. Oh no 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 no. No. Sega CD. Okay. Sega CD is the one to play, or actually the one to play is the arcade on a on a. Uh, like a 1601 board or like the actual arcade. Spider-Man X-Men, I don't even know that I remembered it existing, so it I gotta is, look at footage of that. That is a port of the Super Nintendo game. Oh, okay. I, at the LJN one, I think? Yeah, I, yeah, it's LJN, yeah. that's LJN. I have to say that the Spider-Man X-Men game, Oh, it's the logos on there. I hate to say it, I like the Super Nintendo version of that game better than the Genesis X-Men and X-Men 2. Okay. I'm not a fan of the Genesis X-Men and X-Men 2. Oh yeah, the Clone Wars? Clone Wars and just X-Men. Yeah. Everybody says that they, that game's amazing. I tried it once and I, I own both of those. Yeah. I like, I wasn't like super into it. I feel like that's one of those discussions of like, what's a game that everybody likes and you're not really, you don't really like X-Men. Yeah, yeah, like, but um, I also wanted to tell you, I just got the Game Boy, the Super Game Boy 2. The, oh, it has a, it has a link cable port. That and also I believe it like runs the games at the correct rate frame rate or something okay. like that Which I didn't know and people were telling me that because I was always using the original uh, One so that's an so upgrade of made my game Boy. One stuff. of the things I wanted to do for too many games and we never got the hardware in time is I wanted to get a Super Nintendo with a Super Game Boy 2 another Super Nintendo with a Super Game Boy 2 put Pokemon red and Pokemon blue next to each other on the con show floor and just see what the save files looked like at the end of the convention. Hey, that's a funny idea. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that would be cool. People just come out because you could literally put together all the Pokemon if you had a blue and a red. Right. And if you were like removing. I bet you just people speed run that game, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. If you had the right people to see, yeah. to see it, like literally, or maybe you throw like a yellow in or something so that they could. Um, you know, assemble them all. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they could get all the original Pokemon over the course of the uh, the, the uh, convention. You could, you could try it. So yeah. Mega Man Extreme and Extreme 2, these games are really hard. It's cool because it has zero in it. You know, they're part of like the X yeah. series of games. Like yeah, you could see them. Um, but you know, they're, they're a lot of fun. The teams that made these games went on to make like uh, Inti Creates to do like Bloodstained and God, stuff like that so yeah so um you know you can get you can get those people early on with these two titles okay
Mylon Seeker Castle, I owned the NES game growing up and we did the nerd episode about it. Most people hate that game. That's another one of those games that I'm sort of in the middle on because there's a lot of good things about the game, mm -hmm. but but there's a lot of bad things about it. So it's one of those types, types of games. I, I would be curious to see how different this is compared to the NES version and if it's good or bad. So I don't know. So maybe I, that's a stream in the future. I played the first few levels. It feels like Mylon Seeker Castle. Okay. There's differences. You got to play it. Okay. I have never put this game in the system, but seems like it would be cool. I thought it looked awesome. This is Simpsons Night of the Living Treehouse of Horror, which I love. Those based on the Treehouse of Horrors episodes, obviously. One of my favorite moments of the Treehouse of Horror. Do you remember the one? It's, it was like early on in the Treehouse of Horror where Homer's like in hell and the, and. The devil's trying to torture Homer because, you know, Homer, like, he's, like, fat and likes to drink beer and all that. The devil's trying to torture him by, like, oh, you like donuts? Here's the fucking donuts. But Homer's just laying there, like, uh, and his stomach's, like, getting bigger. And he, like, loves it. It's, like, it's a really <laughs> funny moment. Yeah. I, I, I love The Simpsons as a show. I always turn it on all the time. Um, and I, I thought it would be fun to play this because, you know, people forget, or I guess people don't forget, but people... Yeah, you really have to think about the fact that The Simpsons was around when all these games came out and it's still around today. Mm -hmm. And the, the characters have survived the, the test of time. Um, I, I really want to check this one out, though. Double Dragon 2, I, most people prefer it over Double Dragon 1. I just recently, for the first time in my life, a few months ago, beat the first Double Dragon. And the hard part about that game is the machine gun Willy guy yeah. at the end of the oh, game. Yeah. Um, did you ever do that? I never beat it, but like the, I can get pretty far in it. Yeah. So it's a good game. Yeah, first Double Dragon, but Double Dragon Two, you know, I guess this it would be single player because it's Game Boy. There really would. Maybe there's link cable play. I I don't know. Does, Does it say on it? Does Game Boy even have that though? Um, yeah. That's interesting actually, but. Yeah, you know what? It only shows. No, it shows two guys. I don't know. That's I, I'm actually curious about that now, but we'd have to get another one. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> let us know about that because maybe we yeah. can try that someday. I, I bought um, Bonk's Revenge because I had never ever seen this game ever, and I thought it was interesting that it's a Super Game Boy game pack, so it's a later title in the lineup. And Bonk's always been like this mysterious character to me because he's like a Turbo Graphics character and stuff like that. But I did play the NES game, and I think Bonk's Revenge might be a cool one to check out. So Bonk, um, Bonk, you know was the mascot for Turbo Graphics after Keep Courage and Alpha Zones. And, you know, they had to, they, they knew that that was failing. They had to come up with something better because Nintendo had Mario and all that. So I have, I tried Bonk's adventure on Turbo Graphics and I made it to the end of the game and I couldn't beat the end boss, um, which pissed me off. So someday I'm going to go back and do that. But there's also Bonk's Revenge, which was the sequel. And Air Zonk. Airzonk, Airzonk, I just played the other day for the yeah. first time. I, I bought it years ago, and Airzonk is, is like is a uh, is a horizontal shooter, and it's pretty good. It's kind of like a Parodius type of thing where it's like a cut 'em up, oh, um, really and I kind of cool. like it. So, so I guess this probably is a port, unless they decided to do something different. Bonk's Revenge is probably just a port of right. the Turbo Graphics game and Solar Striker. What, the, what is this? <laughs> what is this? I think I got this for free. I think it was like in a lot. Like I was trying to buy one of these games on eBay. Yeah. And like they're like. Well, it look it looks. I haven't played it, but it looks like a shooter. Uh, I just played yeah. not long ago. I played Nemesis. Yeah. Um, which is actually like Gradius on Game Boy, and it was actually wasn't bad. I made it pretty far. It was a lot easier than like the fucking the real Gradius or or whatnot. Yeah, I haven't played this one. But, oh, an, you know another shooter I just played on, on Game Boy? Oh, yeah. Star Trek. Is it a shooter? There's a Star Trek shooter on Game Boy, and you're just, you're just the Enterprise, and you're shooting, like, asteroids and Klingons and stuff. And it's not good, but just because I like Star Trek so much, uh, I kind of like it, and I, and I really like shooters. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's crappy, but you do the shooter sections. Does it have the music? Yes, oh, that's awesome. and then you then you beam down to the planet, and there are like away missions and stuff. And for a Game Boy game, like if if I personally had that as a kid, I would have liked it. A lot of people thought it sucked, and yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree with that. Yeah. But yeah, Solar Striker, I'll have to try it out someday. And that's the games we had in the bin sitting over there. <laughs>
Me, you know what? How about this? If you guys are interested at some point, maybe we'll look at more of Ryan's Game Boy collection later, or we can go through some of mine. Yeah, that'd be great. And you know, I want to play some of these games, so maybe you'll see those. Soon. I'm really curious about Double Dragon 2, yeah. if that's two player at all. And if there was like a link, let us know.